Hello, everyone. Welcome to Under the Earth Sports. My name is David Woldingen, and today we're talking St. Louis City soccer. However, before I do that, please remember to hit your subscribe button to the YouTube, our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook, Instagram pages, as well as X. Now, St. Louis City is getting ready to undertake uh, their second season in franchise history for the 2024 20, MLS season. Uh, and quite honestly, at the beginning of the season, there is a lot going on because they won their uh, the West going into the playoffs last year, the Western Conference going into the playoffs last year. They earned a bid into the Champions Cup, CONCACAF Champions Cup. Uh, basically, they take the 27 top teams in North America, Central America, and the Caribbeans and put them together kind of like the European Champions League, if you will. Um, because they didn't win, they just made it. They won the Western Conference, made it to the playoffs, stay in their spot. Uh, the key to this is that this could potentially be a big turn up for, for St. Louis City if they somehow go on a run. Because I believe the winner of this tournament qualifies for the 2025, I believe, is this uh, Club World Cup. Uh, I'm not exactly what year they're doing. I want to say it's 2025. And they can compete against clubs across the world, which would be uh, huge for uh, St. Louis City if they could pull it off. So I expect them to play a lot of their starters. Um, now, for St. Louis City themselves, the season kicks off uh, on the February 24th at 7.30 on Apple TV. But uh, before that, they have uh, their first opening round game against the Houston Dynamo, who they matched up with in the CONCACAF uh, Champions Cup. And that will be played on Tuesday, February 20th. Uh, not to be confused with the MLS, this will not be aired on Apple TV. This will be on uh, Fox Sports 1, Fox Sports 2. I believe this game on Tuesday will be on Fox Sports 2 for anybody who wants to watch it. But... I expect it to be a good one as St. Louis City does have a new look to their team. They've added some depth pieces in certain areas now uh, that should help them throughout the season. And they also lost one of their top goal scorers, which is going to be interesting because now they have to go search for a new 10-goal uh, scorer essentially to replace them. Uh, the idea, though, is with uh, Leuven and Klaus potentially – uh, healthy, and if they stay healthy for the whole season, that could uh, cover that gap, if you will. A um, couple players that were sent out were Stroud uh, and uh, Barlett in the transfer markets, if you will. And then uh, uh, Nico Giochini uh, was transferred out to Como, which is a Series B team in Italy. Uh, on the verge of getting promoted to the top level over there. So good for him and good for the club to get a player like that out into Europe uh, that will only bold well in the future for rising academy players and things like that. If they can continue to build their players to be on a national, uh, a world level. Uh, so only, only good publicity there for St. Louis city on, on, on the incoming side of things. They picked up uh, Christopher Durkin, um, I, I want to say he was from D.C. Uh, as a uh, defensive midfielder, uh, kind of helped bloom in the back of the midfield to help sure things up. On the defensive side, they also picked up Thomas Totlin and uh, uh, Nicholas Dyer. Both players on the defensive side, again, trying to fill in those gaps, especially on the wings uh defensively we needed some extra support if you will um that helped this team this upcoming season uh it's going to be a tough season to start in my opinion not only because you have the CONCACAF uh Champions League going on but you just have a lot of games coming out of the gate because because of this playoff series going on or this cup tournament series going on you have a couple games a week to start out the gate it's so really going to check out, uh, test out the depth of this team, um, especially as I want to try to get a good start in MLS play again. Um, the good news is, while they didn't win a playoff game last year, now that they have every, their feet under them, have played a year in the MLS, they kind of know what they need to do, not only with their talent and depth, 
but just rotation wise, things like that, uh, they can see how players play against each other. There's been a lot of competition, evidently, in the spring camps for spots, which is going to be good, especially when you're talking up front. Um, the potential forwards you're looking at are uh, Jao Klaus and Sam Adinaran. Um, plus, I think one of the fall offs last year was Rasmus Ulm. Uh, struggling at the end of the season with an injury, uh, which played a bigger p- impact, I think, than people realized uh, with him out of the lineup, just keeping things flowing in the front of the, of the uh, final third attack, if you will. But with him healthy with Leuven and Klaus, hopefully 100% because of their um, quad injuries, if you will, if they can stay healthy for the whole year, I think the firepower of this team will only get stronger as the year gets further into things, as they get used to each other and learn how to transition better. Um, I think one of their biggest weaknesses last year was building from the back and attacking. Uh, this is more of a transition-type team. So if a team shuts down that uh, quick transition uh, between offense and defense, they have to build up from the back. And hopefully with the addition of these defenders and uh, a healthy midfield, if you will, uh, throughout the season, we can see better uh, offensive pressure, better offensive attacking uh, when you're not in transition. Uh, That would be one of the keys to the season. I know there have been many reports out there uh, asking for predictions on the season, and they have City anywhere from third in the West all the way down to 13th in the West. What that really tells me is nobody has any idea how this team is going to perform. Um, they had a falling off last year towards the end of the season after the break. Again, some of that had to do with injuries, in my opinion. But uh, with everybody healthy, and if they get another strong start, they can wind up in the top again. Uh, this year, though, the goal is going to be uh, to make waves, get into the playoffs and make waves in the playoffs because they're very disappointed, as well as the city was last year, that uh, the team didn't, didn't go farther than they did. Uh, at the same time, if they can make waves in the CONCACAF uh, Champions Cup, that would be huge too. Uh, like I said, they start off with uh, Houston and then they go right into the round of 16 against Columbus. It's worth noting that these games are home and home, and they go off aggregate score. So uh, total total score from both games combined is what decides who goes on to the next round. So the, the, the idea in these games is to score as much as you can and keep the other team from scoring. And if you lose the first game, it doesn't matter if you score enough goals in the second. You get still have potential to move on. Um, kind of the traditional way of these – uh, cup tournaments, that's how to do it over in Europe. Uh, it's not sudden death or anything like that, but it'll be interesting to see how City comes out and handles it, and I'm looking forward to the start of the season and to see this new team come out, and uh, hopefully they start as fast as they did last year. Uh, until then, though, thank you for watching Under Yard Sports. We'll keep you updated on all things St. Louis City, and hopefully we have some good soccer ahead of us this season. It's about that time of year, guys. Looking forward to it. Thank you for watching. Take care.